Hello everyone, my name's Dave and this is part 9, the final part of a video series where I'm going to show you how to create a tower based fence game 100% from scratch using C++ and SDL2. In the last video, I showed you how to make the projectiles damage and destroy the enemy units. In this part, I'm going to add a sound when the units spawn and the turrets shoot. Right now, the engine can draw graphics, but it doesn't really have the ability to load and play sounds. I know that there are many tutorials on this, but I just want to quickly explain how to set it up for this project specifically. In addition, the turrets will need to load, store, and play a sound when they shoot. The same goes for when the units are added at the spawner locations. However, I'll be explaining whether or not the unit class is the best place to store and play the sound, or if there's a better place. The first step is to add all the SDL code required to play the sound. I'm going to include SDL Mixer, initialize audio, update the error message, attempt to load SDL Mixer and store whether it was loaded successfully or not. Then for cleanup purposes, let's call mix close audio and mix quit, but only if SDL Mixer was loaded successfully in the first place, of course. The second step to add sound to the engine is to create a sound loading class. I've already created one and you can see it in front of you. It's very similar to the texture loading class that was already in the project, but it loads the sounds. The first thing it does is check to see if a sound has already been loaded, and if so, it returns it. If not, then it attempts to load the sound, and if successful, it adds it to a hash table to keep track of it for cleanup purposes, and then it returns the sound. There's also a function called deallocate sounds, which frees up the memory that's been used to load the sounds for cleanup purposes. This function needs to be called in the game's destructor, just like the deallocate textures function for the texture loader class. Now that the engine has the ability to play and load sound, the turret class will need to be modified to load, store, and play a sound when a projectile is shot. Let's start by including the sound loader class. Then, I'm going to add a pointer of type mixchunk called mixchunk shoot, and of course set it to null pointer by default to avoid any memory problems. Let's try to load it in the turrets constructor by calling the sound loader's load sound function. It's going to load a sound that I created called turret shoot.ogg. Then, in the shoot projectile function, I'm going to add some code to check and ensure that the shoot sound has been loaded correctly. If so, then let's call the mix play channel function to play it on the first free available channel one time. Let's run the game and see what happens. Very nice, the sound gets played when the turrets are shooting. Now it's time to work on playing a sound when a unit is spawned. As I mentioned previously, we have to think about whether or not the unit class is the best place to store and play the sound, or if there's a better place. Realistically, there's a few places that we could put it. The unit class, the game class, or maybe even the level class. An advantage of the unit class would be that it's cleaner because all of the code for spawning a unit would be contained in the unit class itself rather than have it stored elsewhere. A disadvantage would be with this type of game you may or may not want the sound to be played every time a unit is added. For example, if you modified it so that the player could have units to defend the base too, those units may not spawn in, therefore you wouldn't want a spawn sound to be played. If instead all the code was in the game class, and the sound is played where enemy units are spawned, then it would only be played when an enemy unit is spawned, but not when a unit owned by the player is spawned, therefore solving this problem. The level class really has nothing to do with spawning units, all it does is store the spawner locations. However, maybe if instead the game had a spawner class, 
that spawner class could be stored in the level class. And the spawner class itself would probably be the best place to store and play the spawner sound. However, I don't see any need to add a spawner class at the moment. Therefore, I'm going to add all the code in the game class. However, if you end up modifying the code yourself, you should now have a better idea of where you could put it and why. In the game class's header, let's add a variable for the sound called mixed chunk spawn unit and load it in the game class's constructor. I'm then going to play it where the enemy units are spawned. Let's run the game and see what happens. Very nice. The spawner sound gets played when the units are spawned. That's the end of this video tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it. All the source code is available on my website. Link is in the description. I've also got a bunch of other games, code, and tutorials on my channel and website, as well as a course where I create a Falling Sand platformer game 100% from scratch. Feel free to check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.